In American history, we have had uh, global behemoths, these uh, legacy institutions that became so big, the government had to intervene and break them up. I'm talking about, you know, like the telephone companies. They were a monopoly. And years ago, they had to break up Ma Bell and make it into all small little regional companies. Elizabeth Warren, champion of the progressive left, uh, has come out and said we have to break up the big tech companies like Google, like Facebook, like Twitter, because they're amassing too much power. And uh, one man has organized a movement to break up a literal state, which we very well may need. Paul Preston joins me right now. Paul is the founder and president of the movement for a new California state. Uh, Paul, I know you guys declared yourself independent from California um, but where do we stand right now in breaking up California? Well, we stand in a really good position right now. We've uh, had, uh, we, did, we declared ourselves independence. Uh, we've been following the independence process by reading our grievances. We've read 125 grievances so far in 126 weeks. And we're laying out our case publicly uh, to the, in, into the public forum. And we're well on our way. We've had seven constitutional conventions. The last one, we had Candace Owens as our guest speaker supporting New California and also Dinesh D'Souza. And before that, we had Mike Huckabee at the sixth constitutional convention. The president is all over this movement. And uh, we're, we're happy that he's uh, helping us. I shouldn't say he's helping us, but uh, he's at least given uh, some of his support to us right now, um, which is what we've been trying to do. We've been trying to gain, and gain the support of the president because in all statehood movements, you, you, you must get the support of the president, regardless of the party, who it is. Um, that's just one of the key things you have to do as a state coming on board. And this is only the third time in American history, fourth time, excuse me, in American history that any state has tried to form from a pre-existing state. And the last time that happened was in the Civil War with West Virginia. So um, we've done everything we need to do. Uh, we're rocking and rolling. Uh, we've created ourselves our own government. Uh, we passed 28, 26 uh, resolutions right now, and uh, we're we're uh, starting our our constitutional writing, our, our writing of our constitution right now. Our draft constitution convention is the first one coming up here in December. Then we have a second one in February, so we're going to be well on our way. We're we're working with our California state legislature right now. Okay. Uh, to follow up on that. So let me ask you this, Paul. Um, you know, I have always been a big fan of grassroots movements about fighting for freedom and liberty, where a lot of places, you know, there's overreach, certainly in New York and California. Um, how close and realistic is it that you could break off a piece of California into its own state, a la West Virginia or the Carolinas or something like that? It's 100% uh, realistic. There's no doubt about it. So in your view, um, when you do the math, what would this leave the electoral college votes to be between, um, let's call it California proper and the new California state that you guys are breaking off? Well, we would end up with 27 electoral votes. California would have the other 26. And we would have, um, we would have 20, what, 26 uh, members of the House of Representatives. Right now, they've got 53 in the state of California. We would have 26 of those, it looks like. And, you know, one or two variants, depending on the populations and how it all settles out. But uh, that that literally breaks their hold, their stranglehold, because the areas in which we pull from and how we divided the state, we divided it uh, by rural versus urban. And the urbanized parts of California, which is Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Sacramento, pull in about 20 million people. And in the rural area of California, which is about 90% of the land mass, pulls in about 19.5 million people. Wow. And it was just, a, yeah, I mean, it was like amazing when I, I did all these things about, you know, let's draw the lines here and let's make the state this and that and the other. And finally, we just said, well, you, you have to depend upon where the population centers are. So we, we went to the rural urban uh, matchup and it, you know, we, we said, well, how many people are in the, urbanized area and said 20 million and said well we're really math majors we can figure out that we reach parity right there so that's why we would split those numbers in half 
So um, you take the major inner city urban areas, you got 20 million folks. You take 90% of the land mass in these suburban areas, and you got 19.5 million people. So it's really a split, tale of two states, let's call it, um, right. the inner city versus the suburban areas. Um, what's the next move? How can we help? What can we tell our audience that can you know, get some more uh, meat behind your effort? Or Are there any well, ways people can help? Yeah, there's many, many ways people can help, and especially on a national level. Um, we need to finance this whole thing. It's going to be very expensive going forward. So far, we've accomplished a lot at the grassroots level, but we're making the, the appeal now to the general national audience to go to our website, newcaliforniastate.com, sign up, become a member, and then donate to our cause because this is going to be, a, you know, when we start getting into Congress, then we have to have attorneys and lobbyists and legal things and all this other stuff. So that's a big ticket item for us. But, you know, this is a multi-trillion dollar economy that we're talking about here. This is, uh, this is not for the bashful to be stepping in. This will be one of the greatest things that's ever happened to this nation. Plus, the other thing, the, the big takeaway from this is that we stop the totalitarian dictatorship that we find right now in Sacramento. Right before our very eyes, we actually have a dictator in the form of Gavin Newsom. Um, he has managed to uh, usurp the power of the legislature and usurp the power of the judiciary. And he's a one-man band uh, commanding whatever laws he wants to uh, make in his own head and executive orders. There was actually a lawsuit that put, a, put, uh, put him out of business here a couple of weeks ago, but they, he managed to get a stay. And now he's imposed a, a curfew, a 10 o'clock curfew, treating the people of California like children. And of course, uh, I guess that the, the COVID virus is much more um, virulent after 10 o'clock at night. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, I mean, we I was talking about this earlier. I'm here in New York City, and, you know, we hear the same thing. You got to be out of the restaurant. You got to be back in your house by 10 o'clock. And I start wondering, well, don't they keep telling me to follow the science? Follow right. the science. Um, but now somehow, I don't know, is there any scientific evidence out there that says that the COVID is stronger after 10 p.m.? Or no. it's just fabricated? It's all fabricated. And everything's fabricated about it. The numbers out here are completely phony. And what's, what they've been doing is that they've been going across the border into Mexico and getting people that have been infected and bringing them up to our hospitals and saying that California has a high rate of you know, COVID and virus infection. And it's completely bogus what they're doing. Um, and of course, none of this, it, the, the biggest cover up of all this is California is completely broke as a joke. In other words, what it is, is it, uh, it's $120 billion in debt right now, cash flow. That's the, you know, it's like waking up one morning and you look at your checkbook and the day before you had 3,000 in savings and 3,000 in checking. And then the next morning you get up and you see that somehow you're $5 million in debt. That's what California is like right now. Uh, California is effectively bankrupt, even though you can't go bankrupt. But the schools are closed. They're, we don't have schools out here. The schools are closed because we can't afford them. He's letting prisoners out of prison, felons, convicted felons, out of prison because we can't afford them. Right. I mean, this is the level of what we're getting to. So let me ask you this. There are, you know, there's a growing chorus on social media saying that um, many people, and these are like out conspiracy land, but people are saying that, you know, the pandemic itself was blown out of proportion um, to try to affect our culture and our way of life. Um, and I showed this chart before, if you want to take a look at it. Um, the data in our country, this is from the CDC, where they're talking about um, Total U.S. deaths per year from 2015 to 2019, we average about 2.8 million. Um, and as of November 16, 2020, we're at a grand total of 2.5 million. So we're right in the mean, but we see um, a 98% reduction in flu and respiratory and uh, everything is COVID now, but yet we're at the same amount of deaths. Right. Could this whole thing be uh, be be a, a scheme being pulled off on us? Absolutely, I'm 100% sure of that my my specialty. I'm a biologist, and virology and genetics is my specialty. And I can tell you right now that none of this makes any sense. Uh, when they first started reporting this in in February and March, none of it made sense. Now I understand it's a it's it can be you can get the the COVID 
Um, I, in fact, had what were the symptoms of a uh, very bad flu in, in January, which looked like COVID. But the, um, uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is the death rates just don't match up. They never have matched up uh, in all the assessments and the analysis that I've done. And I was doing it day one on my radio show, making the comparisons, talking the language, and uh, it, none of it's made any sense. So what this is, is a scandemic, basically, and it's one in which it's trying to destroy our culture and society. And uh, this whole notion about putting your masks on and, you know, uh, that sort of thing is nothing but a control by government. All right. Paul, I want to thank you so much for joining us again. Keep up the good work. If you need to get any message out there, just reach out. We'll have you on right away. Paul Preston, founder thank and president of the movement for a new California state. He's doing God's work out there. Thank you, Paul. We appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Quick break. Come back and wrap it up. Uh, message us right now um, if you shared the stream to get a chance to win a liquid lunch swag right after this.